guys welcome back again I decided to film another video today so hence the same outfit I thought it would be a intriguing fun quick video to do as well today and it is I guess what equipment or what you need to be a YouTube fashion or beauty guru I guess which would refer to all the electronic type equipment that I use to film my videos and you don't necessarily have to like the style that I film my videos but the the foundation of the equipment that I use is stuff that most YouTubers use if they're quite serious about doing YouTube videos. I've been making YouTube videos for like two and a half years, borderline three years now. So obviously I'm quite serious about it. It's something I love, it's a passion of mine. And I certainly didn't dive into buying a ton of expensive equipment for a very long time. It was something that I had to make sure that I was interested in and worth investing the money in before you know spending all that money you don't want to just be interested in YouTube for a few months and then decide actually you're quite bored of it now and you want to move on and um, I would only recommend this equipment if you're really serious about doing YouTube videos and not just fashion and beauty ones but any type of YouTube video where you're talking in an environment like this or you're filming outside stuff like that so if you'd like to know what equipment I use please keep watching okay I better start with the basics the camera I went through about two uh, different cameras before I settled on my Canon 600D or T3i that I got about a year and a half ago now I'd say. Um, one of the best purchases ever but like everyone else I started off on my webcam, on my MacBook Pro, editing in iMovie, things like that. Um, those webcams are great for starting off to have a feel, see if you like doing YouTube and stuff like that, they're great. And then I moved on to a Pocket HD camera that was from Kodak, I think I have it here and I use this as my vlogging camera now as well. I don't know if they still sell these because last I heard Kodak was out of business but I mean they're still selling some things and this was a handy little camera. I had a mini tripod for it and everything and it was HD and it was a great little camera but it had very little settings in terms of um, manual settings which is kind of what I wanted um, to fine tune my videos and really have a, a different effect on them I guess rather than a very depthless flat video that I was getting from that. So I decided I did a lot of research on the camera that I wanted and I settled on the Canon 600D or T3i. It's a few models old now. I think there's one or two models out since this one like the 700D. I mean the 750D is probably out by now. A new one comes out every year but there's not a huge change between all of them. Um, my particular model is called the T3i because I bought it on eBay. Riskily enough I bought it on eBay from a reputable seller. If I can find it I leave it down below but I don't think I can remember the seller. It's been a while. Um, and I, I think it's just because it was probably from Asia, it has a different name. So different markets have different names for the same camera. So even though my model is the T3i, it's the equivalent of the 600D in Europe. And it is a great all-in-one camera. If you are a blogger and a YouTuber like me, it takes great um, still images as well as great HD video. Tons of manual settings you can play around with and it's just a great all-around camera. Um, and also there's a lot of lenses available for it as well. So it's pretty affordable too, I believe. Mine was brand new at the time and I got it for about 450 euros which was about 50 to 100 euro cheaper than it was in stores on the high street so I did get a bit of a good deal on it so that's what I'm using now and the little uh, kit lens that came with it at the time the 18 55 millimeter lens standard lens that just comes with it a cheaply made lens but a great lens and it's really good for those that are starting off and getting used to it it's a great little zoom ring on it as well which is great and handy as well as a focus ring so I had a lot of fun with that lens but after a while I, again, like I said, YouTube is an ever-growing process of making your videos better, making your pictures better. It's you, could, you can never stop. There's always something you want to achieve. And for me, I wanted, I quite like the blurry background look. So today I've got the, the blur on my background not too intense. I could have it, I could bump it up a little bit more if I wanted to because I have a different lens. I have the Sigma 30mm 1.4 lens which I mean I have a crop sensor camera so it is pretty much the same as a 50 millimeter 1.4 it's a great lens and um, it doesn't come up second hand very often but I managed to bag a second hand one 
for about 250 euros including postage and I will leave the second hand site that I got it from down in the down bar below. I'll insert another snapshot of what the lens I'm using right now looks like. Because the aperture of this lens goes all the way down to 1.4 I have a lot more control over the background blur, things like that, the background blur in my photos, the background blur and our depth of field in my videos. Sometimes when I'm closer I have a really blurry background. The only thing with it is though it is a prime lens so it doesn't have like a zoom capability which sort of sucks. You sort of just have to set the camera exactly like where you want your shot. You can't just set it in one place and then zoom in and zoom out. It has to be exactly in and where your shot wants to be. On to the second most important part, lighting. Um, I use two soft boxes at the moment. Um, I'm probably planning to get a ring light as well to mount on top of my camera just so I have like a nice even um, space of light because as you can see I have a little bit of shadows going on and um, because I have no light coming up from the bottom. Um, but yeah the soft boxes are great if you want to film at night if you're like me and you're busy throughout the day and you want to film when it's dark outside light boxes are great they let out great light the only thing is they do take up room so if you don't have um, a space where they're fit. I had a very cramped space last year, really, really tiny. I would say probably a two by two room last year, like two meter by two meter room last year. And I managed to squeeze these lights in. So the only the only thing was because they were so close to my face and um, everything was really, really bright, which you can kind of adjust with the manual settings on your camera, but it's just something to, um, think about when you're buying them. Do you have the room for them? Do you have the room to store them? Can you afford them? They are quite expensive. I got them as a birthday gift last year and I absolutely love them. Just being able to film at night and not be restricted by um, daylight is absolutely amazing because you just have this constant flow of light that's not going to change um, as the day goes on because if you're filming tutorials in the winter uh, the the light can literally go from being really bright to being really dim in an hour and in your video you have tons of different light going on. I still like to film my tutorials in daylight just because I like the look of it but just having the softbox lights means that you can film any time of the day you want whenever you want and it gives a nice soft look. I've tried other little things from eBay that sort of mount around your camera. I've tried LED ring lights and stuff but I felt that they gave a really fluorescent not natural sort of look to the skin and I didn't really like how it looked and um, so I really prefer the soft boxes and as well you can control how bright they are by either pushing them back and you can actually since it got darker you can actually see them in the window here which is not ideal but it's good for this video so you can kind of see where I have them position. If you're already a YouTuber I'm sure you know that having your own videos and lighting and stuff like that you are your own makeup artist, you're your own hair stylist, you're your own lighting person, you're your own camera person. You have to do everything yourself. It's a learning process. It's something that you have to fiddle with a lot and play around with and and um, the more you experiment, the more you research and stuff like that, you'll start changing your videos bit by bit and eventually you'll end up with something that you're decently happy with. Another little gadget that I find exceptionally handy is this remote for my Canon. Now you can buy them um, for any DS DSLR from eBay or whatever. Um, I got mine from Amazon. It is the one that goes with my camera. It's the, well it's the one that goes with my brand of camera which obviously is Canon. These are really handy. I just set my camera to detect the remote and it's brilliant. It has two settings on it. It has setting one and setting two. Setting one will take a picture either mid video or it will just take a picture if my camera's on a tripod and I'm in a normal manual photo taking mode or um, auto photo taking mode or whatever. And then two is the record stop and start button. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a pause button. I would love if one of these had a pause button just because then instead of having a lot of short clips, if you stop a lot in between clips, you would just have one big clip, which is a lot easier to work from um, and a lot easier to keep track of, but it's still really handy. And um, This was only about 10 pounds or 10 euros on Amazon, really affordable. And one of those things, if you have one, you will use it. It's really, really handy. And if you take your own out for pictures on a tripod, it's definitely indispensable because you can, I'm pretty sure if you are in 
manual or if you're in manual mode or um, just auto photo taking mode you can either take the picture instantly or I think on the second setting it'll give you like a two second um like a two second like timer just to I guess hide the remote as you pose so I find that these um are really handy and I'd highly recommend them if you're kind of going to invest in a bigger camera and you're making your own videos because it's just so handy to turn your video on and off as you please and you don't have to get up and turn it off manually and move your camera and it, like just stuff like that all kind of helps so definitely recommend getting one of these. Lastly of course is a tripod to hold your camera. Tripods are absolutely brilliant. I actually recently broke my one and um, but I've just ordered a new one which is coming next week so unfortunately at the moment this whole setup is a balancing act. I currently have my camera on top of a box file which isn't safe at all and um, tripods are just a must especially I would say invest in a good one I've had cheap ones in the past I've had smaller ones I've had big ones that only cost me about 20 quid but they're just they're not they're they are lightweight and they are compact but if you have an expensive piece of equipment you need a good tripod you need something weighty something that's not going to blow over in the wind I've broken this lens doing that and I so regret it if I had a um, if I had if I have if I had had a good tripod I would have saved myself like 200 quid in fixing this lens which I could nearly buy a new lens with and I just totally regret it so definitely learn by my mistakes and get yourself a good tripod spend I would say at least 50 quid on a good heavy duty tripod I mean it can be one that falls down small and um, it can be a lightweight one but just get I would nearly recommend getting a weightier one so just that if you're taking your own out for pictures outside and stuff that it doesn't blow over and smash the face off your lens and oh also wear your lens hood anytime you're taking pictures this is a lens hood I don't think I got one with the kit lens but this one came with my Sigma and basically you would have seen these before in like professional photographers cameras they just sit on top of your lens like this and it just protects the lens so if you were to drop it as I did, the, the hood would protect the lens. iMovie is the simplest editing software to use if you have a Apple computer, but I also use Premiere Pro for some more complicated editing. Also, if you have a Canon camera, there's a great piece of software that comes on a CD. It's called EOS Utility, and a little window will pop up if you plug in your camera while shooting, and you can click the live view shoot to actually see yourself film, and it's a great way to see if you're in focus while you're filming. So they are the foundation of things that I would recommend buying if you were serious about making YouTube videos or being a guru or such or just making YouTube videos in general. I think the equipment I showed is like the basic stuff that a lot of serious YouTubers would use and like I said as you go on you can invest in better lighting, better setups, things like that but if you are like a one man show and you just want to do it all yourself then this is a great place to start. I know when I was starting out I was like crazy googling and YouTubing what my favourite YouTubers were using and I just think that it's come to a stage now where people are asking me what I use, it is always, all the equipment I use is always listed in the down bar below in all of my videos but I just kind of wanted to show you the setup that I have. Like I said, for every video, the setup changes. I move around the room, stuff like that. But the main principles are the same. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys, and find it interesting, even if you're not planning to make your own videos and you just want to see how it works. And yeah, that's it, guys. Hope you've all had a nice day, and I will see you in my next one. Don't forget to like this video if you did, favorite, and of course, leave a comment or request in the comments bar below. And I'll see you in my next one, guys.